Walking on David's Roof, part one, it's bondage. How did I get in this situation anyway? That's a great question. You ever gotten in something that you didn't, uh, you know, you're stuck in a ditch or you're trying to figure out exactly how did I end up in this place or this type of thing? Well, you know, there's a reason we're losing the spiritual battle in this world right now. And you go, no, we're not. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And if, if you think we're not, you're kidding yourself. We've won the battle. Christ has won the battle. The victory's there. But we personally are uh, in retreat. And, and it ought not be that way, to quote Paul. Well, so let's start off with a question. Is, is the world getting better or the world getting worse? You know, you just decide for yourself. Do you think it's better or worse today? Is it better when you were growing up or is it better today? I don't know. Watch the 5 o'clock news, 6 o'clock news, whatever it is. News all day. We live in the most technologically advanced society of any age since the dawn of time. You can do anything. There is every convenience known to man in the United States of America. You, you know, my, my cell phone is a computer now. It's the most phenomenal thing. I, can't, I hit wrong buttons all the time. It's great. It, it talks back to me. I look at it and I talk, talk at it and you know, they laughed at Star Trek and the idea of the communicators and stuff when they flipped the things on and said, beam me up, Scotty. Well, today, y'all flip open your communicators and do everything get, but get beamed up. You know, you can get a medical examination over the Internet. They can diagnose you. They can treat you, call in a prescription, and zoom, it's done. Camera to camera with your doctor. You don't have to go in anymore. Can you? I don't, I don't know about you, but when I, when I grew up, my first car, I actually had to install air condition under the dash. Under dash air condition. Man, 1960 Ford Galaxy 500. Man, I slapped that thing underneath there. 340 bucks. Put it in myself. Could you imagine buying a car today without air condition? How how yeah, okay, amen. <laughs> how about a house or an apartment? Uh, unbelievable. There's no way. It's not going to happen. Not only do we utilize what's technologically advanced, we expect it now. It's become part of our life. It's a tradition that we expect and that we utilize and we use. Are, are schools better today? Well, there's more knowledge. There's harder morals, obviously, but there's more libraries. There's more access to the internet. You can walk around with your iPhone and read any, any novel you want or get any historical fact. You can access anything you want. Uh, kids are going to school starting in preschool, learning to read by the time they're in kindergarten. It goes on and on and on. But I'm going to ask you the question is, are they better today? Are they smarter today? Do you see an improvement today? Pregnancy weight rate dropped? Drug weight dropped? Criminal rate, dropout rate? Has it gone down? No. But it's supposed to be better? Well, let's keep going. The average American, the average American household, is wealthier than any other nation in this world. Some of you take Social Security, you receive Social Security benefits. Well, an average Social Security benefit for one person can feed, take care of, clothe, house 270 people in a third world country. And that's per year, one of your month's checks. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? If you make $36,000 or more a year, that uh, can feed, clothe, house, up to 14,000 people in a third world country. We are beyond imagination of what we have. We have more. We have more than abundance. I watched, we had a garage sale. I, I watched the stuff people were selling. Uh, it, it, there, there are places in the world that they would have killed each other over the stuff we were giving away for 10 cents and a nickel. Do you feel safer? That's a very legitimate question. We have the best security. We have the best army in the world. We have agency after agency after agency. Even your car has a clicker on it with an alarm that you can sound. Your houses have. Do you feel safer today than you did 20 years ago or 30 years ago? When I grew up in Spring Branch my uh, in Houston, we left our door open. We didn't lock the door. Now, this is in the middle of Houston. This is not out in the country. We left the door, and, and a lot of times we would just sleep with a door open and the screen door, you know. That's what the air came through. 
Our neighbors came in and out of our house as they wanted to. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, who's been here. When we went to actually sell the house many, many years later, I had to completely replace the locks on the door because we didn't know where the key was to the original lock. That's how few times we locked it. How many of you today would live in the city of Houston, the city of Chicago, or San Francisco, or out in Patterson, Texas, and not lock your door before you leave? You answer that question. Do you feel safer today? Well, how about your finances? Feel more secure today? Feel more secure? You're, you're happy about that direction? You have, you have uh, more security, more safety, more ability, more resources today? Let's talk about churches. Let's, let's switch to a spiritual aspect. Do you feel like the denominations, all denominations, are doing a better job? And I'm not talking about doing a better show, having more technology, doing more dancing and clapping and singing, better musicians, better artistry, more production. Do you think churches are doing a better job for reaching people for Jesus Christ today than they did 20 years ago. I don't believe so. There's 45,000 people in this area, and this morning there may be 1,500 people in church. If you were running a business, you'd be going broke if you were basing it off of that. Well, so uh, Christians, um, Christians today have the same addictions, they have the same bad habits, they have the same problems that non-Christians have. Statistically, the exact same. The divorce rate in churches is the same as it is in the world. And that divorce rate, which was just released two months ago, is now 60%. 60% of all Americans getting married for the first time within the first five years will get divorced. 60%. That's hard. That's tough. Well, it's a fact. You'd think that men and women, of all this advancement, why do we keep making the same mistakes? Why do we keep repeating the same things? Shouldn't our knowledge have outstripped our mistakes? Shouldn't we know better now? How many of the mistakes you've ever made in your life did you know you shouldn't have made before you ever made them? I can put my hand up and say about 99.9%. You know, you ever said anything you wish you didn't say, but you said it? It was like a bullet out of a gun. You said it anyway. You can't take it back. And the minute you opened your mouth and said it, you went, oh, 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 I shouldn't have done that. And then you get a skill across the head. That's the way it is. Budgets. There's just as many Christians in the church today who do not have a budget for their household finances as there are non-Christians. There's no difference. Economically, they're in the exact same spot. And I'm telling you what, brothers and sisters, that ought not be. That ought not be. That's not scriptural. It's not okay. It's not okay to the end of the month. Go, well, there's too much much month at the end of the money. It's not okay. It's not scriptural. It's not what Jesus taught us to do. In fact, he said just the opposite. Let every man count the cost. Let every man count the cost. Go out and count it. Count the cost before you begin that building. Least you be called a fool. That's what Jesus said. Well, okay. So, uh... Walking on David's roof. Walking on David's roof. It's going to be about how to quit and how to start. How to quit. How to quit failing. How to quit making the same mistakes. And how to start being abundant in your success. God, I personally believe, and I believe Scripture teaches us, that God has taught us that we are called to success. And I'm not talking about success like, wow, name it and claim it and go out and get a million dollars. Woohoo! Buy this prayer cloth for $39.95 and you will get instantly blessed. Come on, no. That's not it. But as a Christian, we are called to a place of success. We are called to be successful. And God's very clear about that. He says, success is with me, failure is without me. Very, very clear. That's very clear. It's a very simple teaching, a very simple premise. It begins with salvation. Without God and salvation, you are doomed. With God, you are saved. Okay, if the church, though, keeps losing this generation, uh, the alarming statistic I shared with you a couple of weeks ago was that 50% of children born in 1990 
have never been into a church or any ministry in any form other than for a funeral or a wedding, period, 50%, as compared to 20 years ago, which the rate was about 70 to 80%, depending on which poll you look at. So they're going to get their morals and their spiritual values someplace, and if it's not in church, they're going to get it from the Internet, TV, I don't know. Where do they get it from? iPods and cell phones and text messaging. That's the new language. That's the language of this century. And what it tells us is what we were doing 20 years ago isn't communicating to this generation today. But that's a whole other issue. We need to speak a new language. We need to learn a new language. We need to go in that direction with this generation. Billy Graham said a generation ago, he said, if, if God does not judge America, he'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. He said that a generation ago. So what you and I are experiencing today is what Billy Graham said a generation ago. The second Paul writes, he, he writes this. He says, look, he who plants a seed sparingly will also reap a seed sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. And that's always been apply, uh, applied to tithing and offering. And if you give generously, then you'll reap generously. Okay, well, let's take it another direction. Uh, the more bars that are open and the more rap music that goes on and the more sin that goes on, the more teenage pregnancies that are sown, the more people that are incarcerated, the more murders that go on, that's what was sown in this last generation. That's why we're losing this generation, because a harvest has come home. Well, let me tell you something, my friends, Christians. If you don't like the harvest that we're experiencing today, then we need to plant a new crop. We need to sow the seeds that we want into the ground. We need to water them and tend them and raise up this next generation. It's so simple. Harry S. Truman said, the buck stops here. Well, you know what? If the buck doesn't stop here, if it doesn't stop in this generation, if we don't stop it, it's not going to stop. You think Satan's just going to go, oh, I quit. I give up. I'm free. You're done. Okay, you win. He didn't quit. He's not going to. He's not going to. He's a defeated foe, and he's angry. He's not going down without a fight. Corinthians 5 says this. That was the introduction, by the way. Corinthians 5 says, um, 17, 517. If there is anyone who is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, new things, new things have come. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away.